How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert and in this video I kind of want to just talk about the LAMP stack, which is a stack that I first used to learn how to do full stack development. And I'm not necessarily saying that you need to learn this, but I do think it was a great stack to quickly get your feet wet in learning the full stack development um, process. So if that's something that's kind of interesting to you, be sure to stick around. So what exactly is a LAMP stack? If you look it up, it'll tell you it's an acronym for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And these are just various technologies that you can use to build a full stack server-side rendered application. And I really enjoy it. It's really easy to get going. And there's a lot of really cheap hosts out there where you can simply just like FTP your files over to the host and it just works. It's super easy to deploy. You don't have to worry about like learning these services such as like Netlify or Vercel, which are really easy to use, but really straightforward and if you're a beginner I think it's good to start here but anyway just kind of look at it a lot of people say PHP is dead and you shouldn't learn PHP so if you look at the jobs for PHP developer this is getting back around 5377 so I mean not that many if you type in like react developer you get back 17,000 jobs so obviously it's probably better to learn react or you know JavaScript JavaScript has 31,000 but it's a it's still a fun stack I think to play around with and hack around with so and also like Laravel is written in PHP, which is, I, from what I hear, a really good framework to learn. So if you're interested, I, I definitely think you should check. All right, so I'm just going to show you a really quick demo of how to get started with this. So I have something on my machine called Docker, which allows you to run containers on side of your machine. If you don't know what that is, I definitely recommend watching a tutorial. But in a nutshell, you can basically run your own little operating system that's self-isolated, self-contained on your laptop or your desktop PC and then connect into it and do stuff. So in this case, I'm running on a Mac laptop, but I can run this Docker container, which will basically run a Linux operating system and then it will have Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So if I copy this command, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it here and do a little bit of editing to make it post basically the files that are inside this directory. And I could just paste that in here and that's going to basically download the container from the internet, which is this URL here and start setting up MySQL and PHP and Apache and host it. All right, so at some point during this process, it'll print out a console log down here, which you can see, it prints out a password for my local running MySQL database that's in the container. And I can go to a URL to access something called PHP my admin. So I'm gonna say localhost 80 slash PHP my admin. And what that's gonna load up is basically a dashboard that you can use to connect to your MySQL database, create tables, insert records, delete records, etc. So if you type in admin and type in that password, that should connect you to your database. And that's going to load up the dashboard, which we can start creating databases and inserting tables and stuff like that. So I'm going to go over here and click new just to create a new database. And that is something you can do to basically store some data. So here I'll click a database name. I'll say my underscore database. And I'll go ahead and create that. And now once you have a database, you typically need to define tables. So tables are basically areas that you can store records. And in this case, let's just pretend we're doing like a naughty list tracking Santa thing. Uh, or I don't really know. You could Anything that you want to do, keep it basic if you're a beginner. But let's just make a table called like people. And I'll click go. And the number of columns will actually be two. So I'm going to make a table with two columns. And what we can do now is define what these column names are and what the data types are. So I'm going to say the first column is ID and the second one is name. And for the ID column, you can actually specify some other stuff such as like, does the column auto increment, uh, what the primary key is, and that's more advanced stuff. Um, you can read up on that, but I'm just giving you a really quick overview. Secondly, you can say name is a var care and you can say it's 255 in length. All right, so at this point, let's just go ahead and save that table and I can show you real quick how to insert a record or two. So we got our people table, let's go ahead and click that. And I am going to go and insert some data. So if you click on this insert tab, you could start inserting some data. Now all the operations I'm doing in this UI, you could do on your command line using query statements, but this is a little bit easier and probably more user friendly for a beginner. So I just want to put um, some basic things. So in the first thing I'll say like John could be the first record I want to add. <laughs> and then I could edit this uh, SQL. So SQL is just a language that you can use to insert and fetch data from a database. And it's really important to learn how to use this stuff. Most people use like something called an ORM, an object relational mapper. You don't have to worry about writing this stuff, but I think it's always good to know how stuff works behind the scenes before you start using abstractions. 
let's just add a couple more names. Like I'll add Cody. I can click go. And then I could also type in, uh, let me do one more. I'll say Bob and I'll say go. All right, so at this point, we should have a table that has three entries in it. And if I were to search that table, I could probably do a browse as well, but I'm going to say search and we get back three records, John, Cody, and Bob. And what we want to do in this little tutorial is figure out how to display all three of those inside of a PHP page. So the cool thing about Docker is everything that I put inside this folder now, since I did that virtual mount, is going to be put onto my um, web server. So Apache is running in that container. And I could show you that by just simply creating an HTML file that says like, hello world. And if I go to localhost 80, you'll see we get back hello world. So you see how quick that was to basically set up a web server with a MySQL database. It's really not that hard if you use containers in Docker. So I recommend you download Docker and give it a shot. It's really not as hard as it sounds. So what we want to do is we want to try to figure out how to connect to our database and fetch back that data and display it in this HTML. So again, it sounds really complicated, but it's really not that hard. So let's go and say MySQL PHP select. And if you click on the first uh, entry from Google, guess what? They give you a code snippet of exactly how to do that. So let's copy all this out because we are professional programmers and we just copy code all day, every day. And what we can do, if I minimize that, is edit a couple of things so that we connect to the right database. So we want to change our username to root, and that is displayed and kind of talked about inside of this documentation here. And your password is going to be, it says no password. So I think you can leave a blank, we'll see. And the database name is my database, because you remember in the PHP my admin dashboard, that's what we named it. And let me just show you that just in case I was going too quick. So we have a database over here called my database. That's basically what we're going to do. We're going to connect that database and then we make sure that the connection is live and then we can do a query. Okay. So in this case, we want to do a SQL query to get back all of the names that were in our table. So a quick overview, we have a table named people and how your query language works is you say, select your column names from a table. So our table is called people. So let's just edit some code here. And instead of first name and last name, I think we just call it name. All right, so hopefully if you run this, we'll get back our people. And then this runs the actual SQL query here, which will give us some results. And then they give you an example how to loop over those. So let's just go ahead and run this and see if this works with that example code. So it almost worked. It printed out the IDs, but the name I think we need to update. So over here, basically, this is how you check if there's any results. And if there are results, we can just loop over every result that we find using this um, function that's attached to this. I guess this is an object or a class. Again, I'm not a PHP professional, so I think the arrow means like a method that's on a class object or something. But anyway, we want to print out the ID and then the name. So there are three rows in the data that came back and those rows have different properties such as ID and name. And this is really similar to like JavaScript and other languages where you can just access your keys. Like so, the one thing that's kind of confusing is that you need to use these dots to potentially concatenate a string together. All right, so you see here, we got our table with John, Cody, and Bob printed out. And you see how easy that was to do? Now the cool thing about PHP and other scripting languages like this is you can copy and paste this code and put it down here inside a PHP script tag. So this stuff would make more sense if it was like in a table and we displayed table with rows. So what I'm gonna do is just basically copy this code for right now. We're writing sloppy code, so we don't care about the else. So I'll cut that code out and I'll put it down here inside of PHP tags. Okay. And if I could type. I'll go ahead and paste that in and then we can do the same thing. But instead of echoing out these, what we could do is echo out a table row. So I'm going to make some HTML. So table and that table is going to have a table row and that's going to have some table head that says like ID, bear with me, and a column header of name. And then for every record that we find, we could just print out some more table rows. So I'm going to say echo. Echo TD.
but we're gonna have two TDs, and then I think we just say row, oops, row of name, or sorry, ID, and we'll try row of name. So I may have to add periods for this to actually work. Let's do that, we'll add periods. I'm sure there's a way to do string interpolation here. Again, I don't know what I'm doing with PHP, but I do remember that it was really fun to play around with. So we could basically do that. And now if we go back, I think I'm missing something. Missing that. All right, now if we go back, we have a, an error because I forgot to put a semicolon. So we'll refresh that. And now we have a table with three rows in it. And I printed out the IDs and stuff. So again, that was pretty easy. I think we created a database, we created a table, we inserted some records, we got those records back, and we displayed them using PHP scripts. So all in all, this was really straightforward to get set up. And again, this is considered full stack development. We have a UI, we have a backend, and we have a database. That's full stack. And now you can take it a step further by figuring out how do you have the user send data to the database, or how do you get a user to send data back to your PHP scripts, and your PHP scripts can validate them and store them into your database and then also retrieve them and stuff like that. So that's really all I wanted to show you. I mean, you could take this so much further by like importing CSS, you could split this up in the files and include PHP files everywhere, but just keep your options open. If you thought this was a really quick way to get started with full stack, I mean, I recommend just learning a little bit about PHP, nothing wrong with that. And again, a lot of the syntax is kind of similar to JavaScript. Okay, not really, but kind of is. So it kind of translates over, but the important part is that you learn how a full stack server side rendered application works and all of your routes are basically going to be whatever you put here. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching. I'm going to wrap this little tutorial. I don't even know what this video really is, but thank you so much for watching. This is a web dev junkie video and have a good day. Happy coding.